morning, everybody. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Evergreen Lutheran Church. Special warm welcome to all of you that are here for the first time or are back after a time away. Uh, we feel very strongly that the guest completes and enriches our family of faith. So thanks to all of you for coming today. We celebrate the fifth Sunday after Pentecost and uh, the worship is printed in your bulletin. It is also a three perspective Sunday, so we have two other people besides myself preaching this morning and sharing their perspective on the gospel. Chris Enabo and Rocky Petroki will share this morning, and we are grateful for your courage. We think that's great. It'll be good. So um, this morning is a brunch Sunday, and it snuck up on me. I don't think I reminded you last week that this week was a brunch Sunday, so uh, you may not have brought anything, and there may be nothing to eat, but uh, I would love for you to go downstairs and fellowship and grab a cup of coffee and spend some time with your brothers and sisters in Christ. So we'll do it downstairs in the Grove, so if you are able to join uh, folks, that would be wonderful. Um, Today we leave for Rainbow Trail. We will bless confirmation kids before we take off. We will bless them during the worship today. We're taking 10 uh, youth with me, <laughs> not we, I, um, and um, some of them may not be here this morning for the blessing, but all of them will meet me at Rainbow Trail uh, whenever we have to register uh, this afternoon. We'll be there all week and we return on Saturday. So we covet your prayers for um, protection and for fun. So let's hope that all works out. So um, uh, earlier this week, we sent out a request that you would pray for Ed Furlong. Many of you got that uh, email. Uh, Ed had some pretty serious eye surgery and when I got an email from him, he said he was doing good, and Neil talked with him on the phone, and he's in some pain, uh, but it's a long recovery process. So I, uh, I would, he wanted to thank you for your prayers, uh, but I ask you to keep praying for his healing. That would be great. Um, <laughs> where's Mark? Mark uh, just played the cello for us. So Thursday, Mark walks in and says, uh, I'm from Arizona, Phoenix area, or Scottsdale, and uh, I, uh, I'm an ELCA Lutheran, and I'm going to move up here, and I want to play the cello on Sunday. And I said, well, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I thought that was fabulous. So Mark Engelsman is here, and he is doing cello work for us today. He will play another piece, I think, and he brought his Aunt Barb with him. So, And Aunt Barb's a harpist, and uh, she's not playing today. I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll snag her some other time. But um, So, Mark, thank you for sharing your gifts with us today. Um, Janet Anderson has an announcement or two, and then Larry does too, so... Lightning round. I'm going to go really fast. Um, I'm just here to talk about outreach efforts coming up in the next few weeks. So first up, on page 10 in the bulletin, we talk about a tech class for seniors. If you're interested in doing this, we have a sign-up um, across from the library on the bulletin board. We're trying to gauge interest. We have a handful of people already signed up. Consider doing that. Um, the most important thing coming up is Grove Sale, which is in three weeks. Um, so we really, really need your help. There are sign-ups in the Narthex. We've sent out emails. There was a sign-up genius about food preparation um, that went out this week. Please see Carolyn Bergner, Jan Blumenstein, myself, Dave Kerberg. Um, we have some projects that are great for families that you can do together. Um, so consider looking into that. And information about that is on pages 10 and 15 in your bulletin. Um, page 11, we talk about workshop. We had a mini workshop yesterday. We helped out the Mountain Resource Center with about six and a half people. 
the half bean little Jack who picked up sticks. He was awesome. Um, and it was really fun. And we're going to have more projects coming up in September. And then uh, last thing, um, Curran Anderson, my son's Eagle Scout project construction is about ready to begin. So look for signups for August 9, 10, and 11. We're going to be building a fire circle over by the church house. Thank you so much for all your support. He more than met his fundraising goal. So yay. Yeah. And then I encourage you to look at other outreach efforts on page 12 of your bulletin. There's a lot going on. Thank you. Uh, I'm not from New York, so um, does everybody know that you're on, a, on our videos? Just to let you know, we have cameras, and we've been video on our services, so raise your hand if you s watched one on our link. Yeah, okay, that's great. So anyway, just to let you know that every week we upload Sundays or Thursdays, depending on where we are, video of the service. So if you're not here, you're out of town, you can go to our ELCA, ELC website, and on the right hand side there's a YouTube video, it's the whole service. So you, you won't miss any of these announcements or anything. So just like being here, not quite, but almost. Thank you. And you love these announcements, I know, I know. So uh, those of you that are in the narthex and want to join us for worship, please come in. I invite all of you to silence your cell phones, if you would, please. And as soon as everybody is seated, we will quiet our hearts for this morning's worship. Call to worship is a call and response, just like last Sunday. <clears throat> I invite you all to stand if you are able for this morning's opening. Your invocation is on page one, and then our call and response. Our hearts are united in worship this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. worship God. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone, to the love of God. Oh, yeah. 
Our confession and forgiveness, also on page one. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant us healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault, in thought, word, and deed. I pray, God Almighty, to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with each other. Our service continues on page two with the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, your mercy delights us and the world longs for your loving care. Hear, Hear the, the cries, cries of, of everyone, everyone in need, need and, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with, with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. In this morning's Old Testament reading, the letter to the Colossians was written to warn its readers of various false teachings. The first part of the letter is an expression of thanks for the faith, hope, and love that mark this community, including a prayer for strength and courage from Paul. The Old Testament reading today is from Deuteronomy 10, verses 9 through 14. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors, when you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely, this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, all the children, come on down. Let's chat a little, shall we? Come on up. Hi, Miss Maggie. Can you let me sit there? Will you? Can you, thank you, good, thanks. 
or I'll step on you and I don't want to. Hi. Come on up, everybody. Hi. How are you? You all good? Are you awake? Are you? Okay. So everybody's good today? You been having a good summer? Wonderful. Anybody go on vacation yet? Where'd you go? Ooh, Black Canyon of the Gunnison. Yeah, cool. Conrad. Steamboat, very cool. Yes, ma'am. Nice, Florida, huh? Yeah, yes. Rainbow Trail, that's a good vacation. Some kids are gonna get that vacation this week. We always look forward to going there. Well, let me ask you something. Um, have you ever fallen down and not been able to get back up? Anybody? Have you? What happened, do you remember? Okay, you scraped your leg and it hurt so bad you couldn't get back up, right? Yes? Powder. <laughs> couldn't get up sometimes. Sure, your skis were buried. Well, there, uh, when my mom was alive uh, and she was growing older, she wore this thing on her wrist. I don't have one. I was hoping Barb Kirschbaum would bring hers today, but she didn't bring hers. But uh, she wore this thing on her wrist. And if she fell and couldn't get up, what do you think she did to this thing that was on her wrist? Yeah, she pushed a button, and uh, the, med the paramedics or somebody uh, that's on the other end of the, of the button line would come and help her get up. There's this commercial on TV. There's an elderly lady on the floor, and she says, I've fallen and I can't get up. And that's kind of how she says it. But, and it's scary. If you fall down and you can't get up, it's pretty scary. Uh, and especially to someone that's older, right? So I want to tell you a story today uh, from the Bible about someone that got beat up and robbed and they fell and they couldn't get up. That's, you know this story. And there were three people that came by and the first two didn't help this guy and the last guy was a Samaritan, and he helped this person get back on his feet again. Oh, so, yeah, totally you totally know this story. A lot of you know this story. It's a, it's, oh, you did. It's a great, great story. So let me ask you this. If someone falls and you walk by them, or if someone's hurt and you walk by them, should you just keep walking by? Or if they yell at you and say, I've fallen and I can't get up, what should you do? You sure should help them up. You should, as Jesus' person, you should help them get on their feet. And sometimes people fall in other ways and not just with their bodies. Sometimes their hearts fall and break and we need to cheer them up because you have the joy of Jesus living inside you. So in some ways, you're a good Samaritan, right? In other ways, you're just a good child of God who wants to help others when they've fallen and they can't get up. Okay? Will you remember that for me? If you ever walk by somebody that looks like they're hurting, it's your job as a child of God to help them out and get them back on their feet. Okay? Perfect. Are you all with me? Or are you zoning? You're good. Some of you are zoning. I can see it. But that's all right. So should we pray? Okay. I say the Lord be with you and you say? Perfect. Okay. I'm going to do it again. The Lord be with you. All right. Will you repeat after me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for loving us and calling us your children. Help us as your children to get
get people back on their feet when they're hurting, when they've fallen, when they're sad. Help us to be love to everyone we see. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, you're so good. I love you all. Have a great day. Make sure you help people. Chris, come on up, please. Come on up. I invite you all to stand. Page two, you will find this morning's gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to text Jesus by, test Jesus by asking him this question. <laughs> Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man <clears throat> wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, beside, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. 
The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, The one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, Yes, now go and do the same. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you all to be seated. I invite all of you to take your bulletin home today. And um, next to the first perspective, it says it has, uh, it's like a YouTube, but it's put on um, by other people. And I found it really, really powerful. And I hope you'll look at it and feel the same way. Today we receive the answer to the question, how in the heck do I get into heaven? How do I open those pearly gates? The answer is so simple. Love God, love your neighbor, love yourself. Easy peasy. My work here is done and this would be the shortest sermon ever. <laughs> Don't you wish? But is the answer so simple? Do I love God? Absolutely, most of the time. Love my neighbor? Sure, the Lindsays next door are wonderful, lovely people, except when they put their garbage out the night before and the, and the, the bear gets into it and then trash is all over the neighborhood. Love myself? There again, most of the time. But if the answers are that simple, and we could get everyone to sign on and have no war, no injustice, and no hate, this would be wonderful. But I think it, this is be, beginning to sound a lot harder than I first thought. In our gospel today, Paul says two out of three people, 66% of people, would bypass someone in need. Labor statistics for 2015 show that under 25% help others, which means more than 75% of the population doesn't volunteer for the needy. This reminds me when a professor in one of my classes would tell me to look to my left, look to my right, and tell you that neither one of those students would pass his class. And this leaves just you. I think the amount of people out there helping the needy is going in the wrong direction. From the time of Jesus, God wants us to love with no reservations, warts and all. God wants us in the ditch with the Good Samaritan. He wants us to get our hands dirty, get down eye to eye, and see the others in need. If we looked into the eyes of someone in need, what might we see? A friend, ourselves, maybe our savior. Any action we take towards another person we are doing to God, we have to remember we are called to love one another. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to act with justice and walk humbly with God. Do this and yours is the kingdom of heaven. All you need is to live love.
Well, I've got butterflies. I can see them over there, over here. They're flying everywhere and here. <laughs> uh, so pray with me for a moment so that I can uh, deliver this to you in a mean, meaningful way without too many bloopers. This is pretty unusual for me. I usually just read someone else's writings. Uh, I'm much more comfortable disappearing into the anonymity of the choir. And you guessed it, I do have uh, butterflies. I'm nervous and may goof up in the funny parts. But don't worry, I'll tell you when to laugh if, uh, if I goof up and you miss it. So let's get on with this before I get even more butterflies flying around. Some of you know that I was in a Jesuit seminary for eight years. Jesuits primarily teach in high schools and universities, and their motto is creating men and women for others. So the title of this homily, and yes, I do have a title for it, is Be Other Go and do likewise. So let's talk a bit about uh, other-oriented. Uh, looking at today's gospel, Jews hated Sumerians and vice versa. Apparently two millennia hasn't changed that much. Luke doesn't say who the victim was on the roadside except to say that he was a Jew. Keep in mind the relationship between Samaritans and Jews. So he was on his way back from Jerusalem. But Jesus' point is that a priest and a Levite or a deacon uh, didn't stop. Maybe they thought he was faking it and about to, to rob them. However, this lowly and despised in Jewish eyes, Samaritan, did stop in spite of maybe thoughts like that. And did you notice everything that the Samaritan did for this guy? He bandaged up his wounds, putting on his own wine and oil, put him on his donkey, brought him to an inn, took care of him overnight, and left two denarii, about $10 according to uh, Wikipedia, with the innkeeper to take care of him and then offered to give the innkeeper even more money on his way back. That's not just a good Samaritan. That's an awesome Samaritan. This guy was definitely other-oriented and deserving of eternal life, as Jesus implies to the lawyer. So let me share with you my own somewhat similar good Samaritan experience. This is no parable, though. It was real. I was a boy in grade school, maybe nine or 10. Yes, I was a boy once, in spite of what you see now. I was on my way home from playing with friends and uh, went past the church that I was uh, uh, going to grade school at. And on a whim, I decided to stop by and say hi. In my own simple way of thinking, I thought Jesus needed some company, being alone six days out of seven. So I went up the outside steps and the inside steps to the second floor church, which was always unlocked in the daytime in those days. I was alone, or so I thought. I knelt down in the pew, back pew, and said, hi. What happened next was the most spiritual experience I have ever had. I felt like someone was putting their arms around me and hugging me, and felt the presence of an intense and very warm love. Now, I wasn't having a near-death experience. That's funny, by the way. <laughs> because near-death experiencers usually have these kinds of experiences, but they don't tell people about them. 
But I was uh, very much an alive little boy. But it scared me. I was not expecting anything like that. So I got up, said goodbye, and left. Although saying goodbye, which is an old English contraction for God be with you, was somewhat redundant. That's also funny. (laughs) (laughs) The atheists among us might say, no, no God, just your pre-adolescent juices acting up. The agnostics among us might say, well, I don't know. Well, I know. As I said, I wasn't expecting anything like that. It was real, and I've never forgotten it, even some 70 years later. So you never know what might transpire when you say to someone, can I help you, or simply say, hi. So I encourage you, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I encourage all of you to be other-oriented. And like Jesus' request to the lawyer after his parable of the awesome Samaritan, go and do likewise. Make it so. Amen. Page four, two more verses. I will hold on Christ's life for you. I invite you to be seated. So uh, folks on Thursday love uh, when we have three perspectives because I usually only preach mine or one person usually only preaches and we're out of there 10 minutes earlier. So they just love three perspective Sundays. So, Well, my friends, the many, many times I've studied and preached on this gospel text, I've emphasized more than any other character in the story, the Samaritan, and his kindness and his service. Calling this story the parable of the good or awesome Samaritan inevitably sets up for us, I think, a way to surmise that it is a story about a hero whose actions offer us a good example for imitation. Jesus seems to emphasize this, too, when he ends the parable precisely on a note of imitation. You, he says, pointing to the lawyer, you too go and do likewise. Like the lawyer, our minds automatically go to a bit of works righteousness or accomplishing good things that will open the doors to the kingdom and will show the world how good we are. And that, my friends, is utterly destructive of the notion of grace. Grace that works by death and resurrection. We admire the Samaritan for his heroics, and we want the same title for ourselves. And so we look to perform acts of mercy, and we want a successful caregiving career that is applauded by other people, maybe even applauded by God. Don't get me wrong, I think we are called to do good things. We are called to imitate, but what if the call for imitating is something entirely different than being neighborly to someone who is hurting and in need? What if replicating the goodness of the Samaritan comes only after another imitation? An imitation we are perhaps even more deeply challenged to live. 
Robert Ferrer Capon, in his book, The Parable of Grace, suggests that what we are called to is imitatio Christi, or imitating and following Christ. And from what I know about Jesus, following him is more than doing acts of kindness. We are, I think, even encouraged to follow him into the only mystery that can save the world, namely his passion, his death, and his resurrection. Are we not called, Capon writes, to simply take up the cross? And that, my friends, I think is a lot more challenging than doing something nice for your neighbor. This all brings me to suggesting that, to you that perhaps the one we are called to imitate is the person lying in the ditch. Bear with me, I hope I can make sense in a few more paragraphs to this train of thought. What if, what if the defining character in this story is the man who fell among the thieves and was left for dead, to whom the other three either respond neighborly like or non-neighborly like? What if, just what if, the Christ figure in the story is yet another loser, yet another down and outer who, by just lying there in his lostness and proximity to death, is in fact the closest thing to Jesus in this whole parable? I do think it is the one left for dead that we are called to imitate. And by that I mean, unless we realize the importance of our own dying to self, we can never, ever live for another human being. Unless we understand our own lostness, our own deep neediness, we can never receive God's full measure of grace. I have no idea if this makes sense to you, but it is powerful for my own life. We are called to be the guy in the ditch acknowledging our deep need for God. So the lawyer is told by Jesus, in effect, to stop, stop trying to live and be willing to die. Be willing to be lost rather than be found. In other words, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it simply remains a single grain. But if it dies to self, if it dies to pride, if it dies to that attitude of works righteousness, the need to be noticed and applauded, then, then that seed that dies will flourish with new life. You too and go and do likewise. That's the punchline of the whole story. What Jesus is really saying maybe is go and die to yourself. Go and die for the sake of the world. And when you do and as you do, you will find Amen. Let's sing the last verse before we pray. Please be seated for this morning's prayers. After each petition, I will say, let us pray. And your answer is, have mercy, O oh God. Joining our voices with God's people around the world, let us offer our prayers for those in need. For the church, steadfast and faithful in its mission to proclaim redemption through Christ Jesus for all the ministers of the gospel who proclaim 
that the word is near. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For areas affected by drought or storms, for livestock and fields, for ranchers and farmers, and for all stewards of the earth, that as God's goodness is revealed in creation, we act with justice toward all creatures. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For lawyers and advocates, for local, regional, and national governments, and for peace throughout the world, that God sends gracious and upright leaders to govern with mercy and truth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who feel ashamed, for those who find it difficult to trust, for the bereaved and sick, that God provide compassionate and loving caregivers to all who suffer. We pray especially for those listed in our bulletin, and we pray also for Herb, for Mary, for Bill, and for Gary. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the members of the body of Christ in this place, for those who do good works in our midst, for those who are visiting and those who are absent, that the Holy Spirit guide all the journeys of our lives. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our ancestors who have inspired us by their lives of faith, that thankful for their witness, we can confidently proclaim our salvation. Let us pray. Merciful God, you hear the prayers of your people even before they are spoken. We commend these and all our prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We will now receive our morning offering.
page four, you will find this morning's offertory. I invite you to stand and sing. Let us pray. Gracious God, as grains of wheat are gathered for bread, and grapes together are poured out as wine, so we may be united in your presence through this sacrament of grace. Then filled with grace, send us into the world as leaven for those hungering and thirsting for you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills, and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon all the baptized gathered for this meal and bless this bread and wine. As grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all might be fed with the bread of life, your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Page five, shall we sing together? Come to the table gifts of God for the children of God. May you be nourished in love at this holy table. I invite you to be seated. The ushers will bring you forth.
invite you to stand on page six. You will find the blessing and the post-communion prayer. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen each one of us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, our creator, at this table you have satisfied us with the good things of your grace. Fill our hearts with your mercy and truth, that our lives filled with your Holy Spirit may reflect your love for all creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for a moment if you would, and I would invite confirmation youth and their families who are going to camp to come gather up front, and uh, let's pray, shall we? Come on up. How are you? Yay. Come around if you'd like to gather with them. You're more than welcome to. Um, I know I'm a little biased, but of course I think our kids at camp are probably the, the smartest and the cutest and uh, the, what, the best behaved, And uh, but, but there hasn't been a time that I've gone to camp with kids, and that's 18 times in this church that uh, that I haven't felt proud the whole week long. So uh, you, you have raised beautiful children, and uh, they will bless a lot of people at camp this week. So, so let's bless them now. The Lord be with you. Gracious God, we give you thanks always for the young people in this congregation. We thank you for uh, their good looks and their goodness for their manners and for how they love you most of all. I ask your blessing of protection on us this week. Keep us strong and safe and help each camper, each confirmation student to shine like the sun. Thank you for the gift of these young men and women. Thank you for the privilege to go with them this week. I pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you. See you in the narthex as soon as we're done. Okay? Good deal. Now receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you deep peace this day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, everyone. Be merciful. Remember and love the poor. Thanks be to God. God bless you all. Elaine and John, good morning. Great.